Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to episode 25 of the BCM podcast. But today it is the CM podcast because our host Brad is not with us. And that could be a good or bad thing. Let us know at the end and we'll Absolutely. relay that information to him. So um, how are you, Michael? Good to see you. I'm, again. Do, I'm doing great. If it all goes well, he might start getting the wrong times on his calendar for our recordings. <laughs> <laughs> I think he should. I think I'm this great. is going to go very well. Um, you know, even though he said that all the guests check in first to make sure he's going to be on, but I don't think that's the case. I think we're going to have fun today. Um, so, uh, our guest today is going to be Connie Burton, uh, publisher of the Texan. So I'm super excited. Connie has been, um, a, a ever present figure in Texas politics, at least since I've been here, certainly. Um, and so I'm really excited to talk to her and get her insight. Um, and just to kind of get the housekeeping out of the way, if you, if this is your first time watching, please share with your friends, your family, comment, let us know if you like it, if you hate it, um, let us know if there's something that we should be talking about that we're not, um, but we're really excited to have her and we're really excited that you're tuning in. So um, any other housekeeping items, Michael, that you got? Click the subscribe button. At, at, see, I, all, I forgot that one. Yes, click the subscribe button <laughs> and make sure that you lock in so that we can uh, you can get updated with all of our new episodes. Um, but we don't want to hold you too long, so we're going to get started. And I got a little brief intro video that we're going to play um, for Connie, or of Connie, rather. So let's get started with that. Activist helping other people to get elected. I loved it. It's like, okay, this is great. I have yeah. more, you know, this is my way of affecting what happens right well then i ran for office and you know never thinking i was going to run for office then i ran for office and then i was in the senate and it's like okay this is awesome i get to actually you know do real yeah. things effect of course i never thought i would own a media organization <laughs> as a lifelong texan i've witnessed a media that has become more biased and downright hostile to the worldview of so many of us but it's not just me that sees this. In fact, seven out of 10 Americans believe the media knowingly spreads misinformation, at least some of the time. I'm Connie Burton, uh, founder and CEO of The Texan. Awesome, awesome. Well, welcome Connie, American businesswoman, former Republican state senator, <laughs> publisher, activist, all of the things. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Good morning, how are y'all? Good. We're doing Good, how are you? Good. I like y'all because y'all quickly threw Brad under the bus this morning. I mean, you're Absolutely. my kind of people. <laughs> Absolutely. He didn't show up. Exactly. <laughs> his, you know, his loss. Right. Is it 70%? That seems low. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Who are these other, what, 30%, right? It just right. It was 70. Right? Yeah. Well, yeah. That's when you launched it. So it's probably much higher. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Exactly. The last few years have. My uh, gosh. Woo. When you think yeah. things can't get any worse, any crazier, any stupider, <laughs> I'm just going to say it. It <laughs> does. Right. You know? Yeah. Oh. yeah. Gosh. And no, I mean, and that's exactly right. And I'm glad we're starting there because that's exactly where we want to start. Is I mean, much of that is what brought you to launch the Texan, right? So if you can kind of walk us through what you were thinking at the time, because that's a big endeavor to undertake, but it, it was so important. It is so important. So kind of how did you get to that place? So, um, you know, obviously those of us who have been in the political arena, not even arena, just watching things from a political perspective. We've been frustrated with the media for a very, very long time. I mean, I was telling a group the other day, I was speaking about the Texan and I was telling them that my husband and I canceled our Fort Worth Star Telegram our, uh, subscription. And then I was like, oh my God, I think that was 25 years ago, <laughs> you know, because they, because at that time we were starting to go, they, they just don't, they, you know, they're not writing from our worldview. You know, they're, they're, they're very liberal from their political perspective. So that was 25 years ago. Um, and, you know, so, so we've been frustrated with the media for a long time because they write from their personal worldview, which unfortunately for the right is very left of center. So they come at you from that perspective. So, you know, I was frustrated with it even long before I became heavily involved involved as an activist. Then when you're an activist, you know, I came up within the Tea Party ranks. And, you know, while I was politically active before that, I was raising a family, you know, you're doing your, your thing, you know, you vote, you think those Republicans that you're voting for are, you know, actually standing for the things they're supposed to stand for. And I was like, you know, people across the nation that was like, 
wait a minute, you know, we have George Stepka in office and bless his heart for, you know, um, that time, you know, with, with all that we went through with 9-11, I appreciate him. But at the end of the day, he was growing government, right? right. You know, and, and while many people, uh, the media acted like, um, you know, it was Obama that, that created the Tea Party movement. It wasn't Obama. It was George W. because Republicans were growing government. So I came up in the Tea Party ranks and, you know, we we did a lot of, um, you know, organizing of rallies and things like that. And then I would see the articles. I was literally at the rallies, uh, saw the speakers, saw the people, you know, just a bunch of old people that are frustrated, you know, with big government, you know, basically is all it was. And it became this, what on earth would I would read in the media? Versus what I saw being literally there were two different things. You know, of course, it became this racist movement, you know, like we're just tired of growing government, you know. So so, um, you know, that was just, again, even more like, oh, my gosh, this is awful. Then I became, you know, very heavily involved in activism. You know, then I got was a candidate. Then I was an elected official. And you start to see, you know, even more the disparity between what the what the media reports versus what is really happening. Um, and then, you know, after I was there for two sessions, we unfortunately were running again in the Beto wave. Um, <laughs> and it was insurmountable, uh, even though we outperformed Ted Cruz in Senate District 10 in, in Tarrant County, we could not beat the Beto wave. And so I lost my election. And all these years of frustration that my husband and I witnessed from the media, and I have to speak here, it was at that time just very much the uh, liberal media that we were frustrated mm -hmm. with. And we said, you know, dad gummit, we just we need something in Texas, particularly who is a which is a right of center state. Not by so much anymore, but it is a right of center state. And all we have on these legacy media uh, organizations are left of center, you know, politically motivated left of center uh, legacy media outlets. So we decided to launch the Texan, which is which is all it is, is not a right wing media site. We don't want to do on the right what they're doing on the left. We want to, we are trying to uh, get back to what me media is supposed to do. And that is report the news and let the consumer, the reader, people, activists, voters decide for themselves where they land on issues, campaigns and candidates, those kinds of things. So we want to report it. And I always, you know, I'm, I'm very open about the fact that we are right of center politically. I think that's important for people to understand because we no, we understand why right of center people are frustrated with certain issues so we can report on them from a better perspective. That's not to say that we push any agenda. Right. But it, but to give you just a, a quick, um, you know, uh, sample is, you know, always before the border and maybe it's changed a little bit now. But, you know, the border, if you were if you were somebody that was very concerned about the border from the media's perspective, you're pretty much a racist. <laughs> you know, that's where it was always before. Now, obviously, pictures, videos, things like it's becoming a little different. You know, they can't they can't you know, the media can't look at this and go, mm, you know, it's, it's not just about racism, is it? You're right. So, you know, what the what the Texan does instead of coming from a from a, a, a starting point of these people are racist, you know, and why are they racist against these people? We talk about statistics, you know, of who's coming over illegally, um, what the process is to get into the to the country legally, um, uh, drug trafficking, um, you know, uh, human trafficking. I mean, there are reasons that right and left people should be concerned about our border. So 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 while, you know, we are right of center, I think that's only to help people to understand that there are truly issues here that need to be dealt with, not because we're trying to push an agenda of any kind. And and let me before I, you know, um this is very long there, but let me just say too, it's it's interesting that we came into this because of left of center media, but by God, are we frustrated? Am I frustrated with right of center media now? Oh, yeah. You know, so it's it's funny because we came into fruition because of left of center media. But, 
you know, like I said a minute ago, we didn't come in to just do on the right what the left is doing because there's no what what good is that? You know, it's just uh, yelling at each other and and pushing narratives. Uh, but right of center media account, Twitter accounts, whatever, you know, that just want influence and likes and, and, you know, all of that are becoming just as bad as the left of center, center media. And it's why everybody's yelling at each other because nobody's telling the freaking truth. <laughs> Can I say freaking? Sorry. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Whatever you want. <laughs> yeah. It, it just serves, it just serves to further divide us. Yes. Like, like you said, all of us want humans to stop being trafficked. Yes. No matter yes. what political spe spectrum, all of us want police to <laughs> at least have a, you know, a, a conviction of a crime to take somebody's stuff. Exactly. Right. There right. are issues where, you know, uh, Democrats and Republicans actually talk and work through and and, you know, those kinds of things. And while there is divide on a lot of big issues, um, still the truth needs to be told, you know, yeah. so that you can, you know, so that you can decide where you fall on that. But it's becoming, oh, on both sides of the media aisle. It's just becoming a war of words, a mm -hmm. war of who has more influence, how many like the dopamine hits on the likes, <laughs> you know, uh, creating. And frankly, this is one, this is something I talk about a lot is creating mob mentality. Yeah. And nothing scares me more than mob mentality. Uh, and that's what I see a lot of in Texas, particularly. Nobody wants to be, you know, discern particular things and say, okay, you know what? I really don't like this guy for whatever reason, but he's right on this. Mm -hmm. Or I really, really like this guy, but you know what? He's wrong on this. I mean, there's no more of that, right? right? You know, and it, that doesn't it's just not a good place to be um, at all. So so the Texan is trying, you know, as hard as we can to break through that and tell people, hey, you know, there are issues that we need to be dealing with. And 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 not everybody is right all the time and not everybody is wrong all the time. No. Um, and let's use some discernment and, and you know, kind of um, come to a conclusion based on facts. Right. That raises right. two, two. I have two questions related to the Texan. So first, one of the things I see in media is the reporters are constantly pushing their opinions. Yes. I don't. How, so from a from a management standpoint, how do you stop a Brad Johnson who we love on the show and is excellent <laughs> from inserting what he thinks? And then my second question, unrelated, what was the tipping point for the Texan? Because I remember back when you guys were like a rough and ready startup. Yeah. And people are like, what's this new thing? What was kind of the tipping point that kind of, because now you're a powerhouse. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I just, when I, I just walk into, for Brad, I walk into the office and I just whack him. No, no, no. Um, uh, so, you know, you're, you're spot on. What I found so unbelievable, I couldn't believe it, how media organizations allow their reporters to speak their political ideology on Twitter. I'm like, okay, you know, we all know you're left of center, but now these reporters are just blatantly right. spewing vitriol, right? You know, and it's like, okay, you know, uh, if you want to hide behind the fact that you, you know, you are, uh, uh, what is it, non, uh, unpartisan, nonpartisan, non yeah, nonpartisan, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. You know, all these, org and I say this all the time too, these media organizations, so we're nonpartisan. Oh, yeah. Have you looked at your reporter's Twitter feed? You know, right. And, you know, and so it, 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 it's like I, I couldn't believe it. I could not believe that. Um, and, and I don't know if they don't have a choice because, you know, they're all unionizing these days. Right. You know, I don't know why management. I don't know why any editor in their right mind. Maybe they don't see it. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, because they live in that arena. Maybe they think everybody thinks the way they do and that's not partisan. You yeah. know, I think a lot of it is they just don't, they don't understand right of center people. And mm -hmm. that's again, why I, I, I'm very, you know, vocal. At, yeah, we're right of center um, because we under, you know, so I think that's very important, but we also, you know, read our content. 
read our content and tell me where you see us pushing a narrative or pushing, you know, a bias. And we definitely absolutely have in our, you know, um, uh, is it our ethics? You know, we say you cannot get onto Twitter and uh, put your personal uh, viewpoint out there. Um, you cannot, I mean, we, that is a rule. We will not let them do that. They would be fired if they did that. Um, and so we don't allow that. And frankly, it's interesting, you know, I, and another thing that I say, and generally I speak to right of center groups about the Texan. Uh, I also speak to uh, nonpartisan groups about the Texan because, um, you know, everybody's looking for, I just want information. Yeah, mm -hmm. I just want information. Um, and, um, you know, I tell them that um, while, uh, you know, uh, somebody like a, 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 all of us in this room will disagree on an issue. All of, even a right of center room. We're all going to fall down on different sides of a particular issue. That's normal, right? So, so don't be surprised, even though I say they all come from a right of a center perspective, that we all agree with each other either, right? You know, we get that there's different viewpoints. That's why we try not to push a narrative or push our opinion on you. I want people I want to treat people like adults. Mm -hmm. I think the more we don't treat them like adults, the more they become less adult-like in their yeah. decision-making, right? right? It's like government. The more government d does, the more people abdicate their roles to the yep. government, right? There's like, yep. what? You know, that's why, you know, people are screaming, well, why isn't government doing anything about that? Why isn't, why isn't our local government? You know, we hear a lot of people saying that all the time, like, yep. What, what are you talking about? That's not a government role because they've become used to be, you know, government doing this stuff. It's the same thing with people not getting themselves educated and making up their, their own minds. The more we try to tell people what to think, the less they're going to think for themselves. Then that's where I right. sit on this. So, yeah. Yeah. No. And um, and I, I want to circle back to to Michael's point about the tipping point where you felt right. that the tipping point, James. But yeah. then I'm gonna, if somebody can remind me, I want to talk a bit about how the right has kind of come to look for government to solve its problems. But I would I do want to get to that tipping point question first and where you guys felt that you made that transition. Yeah, it was interesting. I don't know if there's a particular time it, it, mm, that I can point to, but mm -hmm. I do think, you know, here's the deal. We are not people in our homes, I am, um, but we are not, the Texan is not people in their homes, you know, uh, tweeting out garbage that they find online, right? Mm -hmm. So, so we have an office in Austin where our editor, our assistant editor and our four reporters are. Um, and then of course we have um, reporters in different parts of Texas as well on the, in the areas of which they report. So first and foremost about um, our office in Austin. So you can't just go and be a, a, a media organization and be on the Senate floor and be on the House floor just because you want to. You have to you have to get your credentials to do that. Um, and so, of course, let's see, we launched like in April, five years ago, whatever year that was. And excuse me. And so we obviously couldn't be at the Capitol with credentials at that during that session. But the next session, you know, we went through all the things, we filled out all the paperwork. I mean, you have to be, you know, you have to have all these criteria. Mm -hmm. And we got approval. And for that next session, um, and so we had people on the House and Senate floors. We continued to this day. We are at the press conferences. We are at, you know, we are, they are talking to elected officials. They are talking to people who, uh, the stakeholders, you know, they are talking to, so our, you know, I think that was really the start of how we became such a respected, if I may say so, um, media organization. Uh, I've heard so many times since then, you know, Democrats and Republicans alike, you know, they kind of put you in this box, whatever it may be. And it's like, yeah, you know, Connie Burton starting this. We know what this is going to be. You know, it's going to be a right wing rag. Um, and uh, even though 
you know, anyway. Um, and then, so of course they met our reporters, uh, and what gets reported is actually what they said. Um, you know, we're not pushing an agenda. We're just trying to get out information so people can, again, make up their own minds. So really it was, you know, it's kind of been this gradual and then all at once process that they see that we're doing what we said we were going to do. It's kind of like what you want in a politician, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, you said one thing and you did it. And we continue to do that. And they see that our reporters don't put their personal opinions in their Twitter feed. Uh, they're not putting their personal opinions in their articles. Um, they're, you know, just writing and giving out information and everybody's, it is, you know, enjoys it, is appreciative of it and realizes what we're doing. So, so I'd say, you know, really it comes from us being there, uh, talking to people, reporting on, uh, I'd say that first session, it started. And since then we've only gained more and more and more, um, uh, you know, respect and, and, and then the more respect you gain, the more you get, uh, information, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. So our guys have a lot of contacts um, within Austin and they, I mean, they have a lot more information that they, than they give out to people uh, mm -hmm. because we're not a, you know, we're also not a gossip rag either. <laughs> uh, and while it gives them context to go, okay, you know, I see what happened, you know, right. and that's why I get very frustrated with um, right of center people and media you know, that aren't even there, don't even have contacts there, you know, and they hear third and fourth hand and therefore this must be true. And it's <laughs> not, you know, um, but, you know, that's what we fight daily, left and right, I'm afraid. So oh, yeah. anyway, so it was a gradual process, but I think us being at the Capitol, being where we are supposed to be, even the people uh, that are in Dallas, Fort Worth and Houston, you know, Holly, um, you know, she's, uh, you know, at the places asking questions. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a lot of, you know, why we have become a respected media organization. Well, and I think to your point, you know, it's so much about what they write and how they write and, and the way they frame it and what they like or don't like on Twitter. But it's also just, you know, with some of these legacy media outlets, it's what they choose to not write about shows their bias. You know, if it's something that it isn't in their opinion. And and I was going to mention Holly because Holly, she'll write about everything that happens. And sometimes I'm just confused how she even pumps out that much work. But she will write, you know, she writes about I know. And so it's, you know, it's it's covering mm -hmm. on whether she likes the issue, doesn't like the issue, likes the elect official, doesn't like the official, and you don't know because she's right. writing it from a very objective perspective. And so, I, right. and, and everyone does it. Texas, everyone so. does, but you're right. I mean, Holly, I always tell people too, when I it's like, Holly Hansen in Harris County, holy cow, if you're not reading her, just because <laughs> you don't live in Harris County doesn't mean you should, you know, you shouldn't be right. reading the stuff that she writes because frankly, it really goes to show, um, you know, let's say right of center people, particularly uh, concerned about uh, big government. And, you know, you can see how quickly an area within a state becomes very, very, not only liberal, but a, an AOC type of, which right. is very different than the Democrats we've had in the past in Texas. And frankly, we still have a lot of Democrats, believe it or not. I try to tell people this, um, you know, the old time Democrats are different than the AOC type Democrats. Right. And we still have a lot of those in Texas. So to, 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 to just claim all Democrats believe so-and-so, you know, or such and such is not true, particularly in Texas. So be careful. That's why I get very frustrated with this all or nothing attitude that we seem to be in in politics, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody on this side is wrong and everybody on this side is right on certain issues. Hell yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, but not on everything. And so, yeah. um, so anyway, so uh, Holly in Harris, it's very, it's, and it's not even big government. I mean, you know, she's doing a lot with Kima right now. Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. oh yeah. What the holy heck <laughs> is going on in Kima? Right. And it just right. goes to show if you're not involved in your local, quit acting like the freaking president <laughs> is the end all to your political involvement. Your, your local city is right now probably doing stuff and, and, and it's Republican or Democrat. Mm -hmm. um, and they're doing stuff right now, right under your nose. And you're not even watching because you're so blasted concerned about these two old men running. Oh, sorry. 
<laughs> I just don't know how we are where we are right now. Where we've got these two guys. I'm sorry. I, you know, I no, go for it. That's it. Yeah, I just, you know, I voted for Trump. I'll vote for Trump. But yeah. dear God, how are we in this country with these two guys? You know, once again, it was kind of like when Hillary, it's like, you know, it's just like, I don't know. It seems like we've got the same people running all the time and it gets me a little crazy, but. That's not there. <laughs> Obviously, I tell you my opinion, but my my staff does not. So yes. Well, and so I want to bring up one of your tweets, and it kind of goes with with this idea about who we have running on both sides, because I do want to talk about how we got here, and I hope this is the right tweet I have pulled up. Um, where yeah, so why why have we gotten to a place in this country that so many people on the right and the left want government action for every conceivable problem, particularly when it's government actions that made the freaking problem in the first day of life? I cuss a lot. <laughs> but these are politics. Issues. It's necessary. These are important issues. It shows passion. <laughs> but I, I am curious, kind of from your, your perspective, having been, you know, an activist now in media, been an elected official, how have we gotten to this place, one, where people are so dependent on it, but two, where, yeah, we don't have better options. I mean, we're just kind of like sitting here looking around. <laughs> no, I was talking to somebody, I had a long conversation with an old friend of mine uh, from the early Tea Party days, and we were actually discussing other things, some some points of view now that are odd to us from the right, you know, and, um, I, and, and, and we, you know, touched on the presidential election. And again, I'm not, I'm just, it's just, how do we get to this place where, you know, we've got these two people running again against each other when it was a, you know, I think nobody, anyway, anyway, um, what I said to him was, I guess the only thing that's going to, we've got to get more people involved in the primary process is the only thing I can see. I mean, if you've got, I don't know, I don't know what the percentage is, but my understanding is there's a large percentage of the country who don't want either of these guys as the, um, the candidates. Well, they had a chance, you know, during the primary process. Um, now, you know, that's not really, really fair because, you know, You've got the propaganda machines working on both sides, again, pushing narratives, um, you know, both for each side saying he's going to win. If you if you nominate anybody else, they're going to lose. Nobody knows doo doo about who's going to win and who's going to lose. It's all pontification. It's based on nothing but speculation. And yet people believe that, I think, a lot of the time. But but um, so there's a lot more to it. And unfortunately, you know, this one was was pretty short lived. And I, and I get that, too. I, you know, I think once you see the writing on the wall, you know, um, I don't blame candidates for getting out of the, the presidential primary race. It's very expensive. It's very, you know, um, takes a toll on you and your family and you're spending other people's money. And, you know, when you see the writing on the wall, you should, I think it's a good idea to say, okay, there's no path here, but, but I think we have got to get more people involved in the primary process. If, if, if a majority of Americans do not like the two people that we have, then okay, you got to get involved in the primary process. Now, does that mean fixing the whole primary, you know, off the top of my head, I have no idea if this would ever, I, this is just purely, you know, uh, off the top of my head, but maybe have a primary day all on one day for every dead gum state, right. you know, um, I have no idea if that, but you know what, you know, it, yeah. it, it would kind of alleviate all of this rhetoric and propaganda and this just push, mm. you know, to, to have the outcome be a certain way by, you know, nowadays, um, social media people who are really just wanting to be on the bandwagon more than they really want that person. So I don't know. I don't know what the answer is other than right now getting more people uh, in involved in the primary process. And that means, too, um, you're, you know, the uh, state level, you know, too, you got to get involved in the primary process if you're not happy with who you you're going to vote, who you have left to vote for in the general in November. And that's Democrats and Republicans. Right. Right. Yeah. Here's a. I, I'm gonna. I'm gonna speculate here. Oh yeah, we can so, speculate all we want here. Uh, yeah. So in 20, uh, 2008, post 2008, there's a big Tea Party movement. This is what you're talking about. You come yep. out of. Yep. Followed by what I, you know, a lot of energy in 2008 behind Ron Paul's presidential campaign. Yep. And then in, uh, subsequently in 2012, which I was involved in, and 
I'm a big Ron Paul guy. <laughs> and then Trump runs and all my Ron Paul friends, these like, and the fed bring all our troops. They're all Trump people. Mm. And I think his, I think his instinct to disrupt is what they like about him. Yeah. Cause they're so we we were all so angry about everything that's happening. So we see a orange, big orange man who's angry too. And we're, we like associate ourselves with him and he does have some elements that are good. Yeah, about him. that's right. That's correct. But his instinct to <clears throat> decrease the size of government is non-existent. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and you are hitting it on the you're hitting the nail on the head because I remember I was a Ted Cruz guy, you know, mm -hmm. fighting very hard. And remember, we had like 18 candidates running yeah. in that race, you know, and I was all about Ted Cruz. I was, you know, working hard for him. And then, you know, here comes Trump, who didn't have any kind of record. Now, mm -hmm. I think what also resonated was he what has was a excuse me, a businessman, yeah. you know, and people say they want somebody that understands running a business to run the government. Well, I'm going to tell you something. They're not the same. Sorry, all of you people out there who think, you know, we need a businessman. It's like, well, uh, government has an endless uh, amount of money to, 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 to use, mm -hmm. whereas your business runs out of money and the business goes under and you can make quick decisions and fire people and change. But, the government isn't, that's not how government works. We, you know, it's, it's a, you know, president house and Senate, it's based on the constitution. They're two very different things. And while I appreciate what people are saying, and I totally agree, you know, we have to live within our means. Well, what is our means when you have a, when you have a, a, a government that can take as much as they want, whenever they want, right? So, so, so not only that, but really what you stated, Michael, is exactly correct. He was like, he came out and he said stuff that excited people. He was like, I'm not taking this crap, right? You know, and, and while I get it, trust me, I get that. And it, I, you know, I was one of those who was like, okay, but just because you say something doesn't mean, you know, you're going to do it, nor have, do you have any history to prove that you have, right? So that was my problem. Now, I have to tell you, once he got in, I was like, holy cow, he yeah. did some great stuff, right? Yeah. I was, I was much more pleasantly surprised than I thought I would be. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think, <laughs> I also think that the media, uh, the left, drove Trump more to the right. Um, yeah. Remember Nancy Pelosi, that whole, I mean, they despise Trump with a, with a passion. Um, and so it kind of drove him more over because if you recall, I think his greatest, his greatest um, oh, flaw, um, what he didn't do, and why I was so all about Ted Cruz is he was going to get rid of Obama, uh, Obamacare, hmm, right? Yeah. Ted, Ted railed on that. And I think it's the, the biggest travesty, you know, of, of our time uh, to have the government take over the medical, um, hmm. yeah, well, I don't know, industry. But, you know, we've seen what has resulted in all of that, particularly with something like, you know, uh, coronavirus. You see how it's a dangerous uh, combination. But, you know, Trump got in and had the had the House and the Senate and his words were literally it would be too mean uh, to uh, get rid of Obamacare. And I was like, what? <laughs> Not something he's typically concerned about. <laughs> so that to me was. but And so I was just like, oh, this is going to be horrible. This is going to be horrible, horrible, horrible. But then, you know, he did some things that I was shocked by, pleased by wonderful, great, you know, and then he didn't have a, um, a primary challenger. And I was like, Oh, all about Trump. Let's get him reelected. Let's get him reelected, you know? Um, and then, uh, then he lost and, you know, for me and, and while I get, you know, I get people, I, I get it, you know, he, I mean, good Lord, the vitriol, the, vi I mean, yeah. the vitriol toward him is, is unprecedented. Uh, and, it, and, and so it, it makes you as an individual want to defend him even more. If the media would understand that they're so dumb, aren't they? <laughs> really? They just, it's like you're, you know, you're so dumb. 
um, but you know, so I think that's why a lot of people, um, you know, then wanted him again. I coronavirus became my number one issue. You know, it's interesting as you now, my number one issue is always fiscal uh, responsibility. And <laughs> we got none. <laughs> we got none anywhere. Right. So first and foremost, I am concerned about our debt at all levels, local, state and federal. Um, so I'm no different, you know, nothing has changed in me, fiscal responsibility, personal, um, liberty, you know, um, limited government. But when coronavirus came about and all of a sudden I saw our personal liberties just being like, what the hell is going on? And people on the right, Charles, you know, we're like, yeah, we got to do this. We got to do this. I'm like, you're not telling me to put on a mask. The government's not telling me to do this. And what is going on with people? You know, everybody lost their minds. They lost their minds. And, you know, here I don't, people are going to be upset, but Trump walked out with a with a mask on, um, mm -hmm. as did mm -hmm. Governor Abbott, mm -hmm. as did many of my, you know, many Republicans, probably probably each and every one of them on the right, except for what, Rand Paul, um, <laughs> Thomas Massey, right? right they were like the only ones really fighting it. Um, all, you know, uh, Ted Cruz. And I was like, what is going on? So uh, because, um, you know, that just became my number one issue because it involves personal liberty. It grows government. You mm -hmm. know, it does all the things that are my values. You know, when we came to this primary, I was like, I'm all about um, DeSantis because he's the only one that pushed back, you know, and 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 said, let's look at the data. Let's not look at the fear mongering. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, but he didn't make it. And so, you know, I'm, I vote for, you know, the Republican in the general. That's how it, how it works. You fight in the primary and then in my world, in my world, right. um, you know, and then you vote for the for the Republican uh, in November. So anyway, he, he you know, he was um, to get back to what you were saying. Yeah, he disrupted things. And, and that's all great and good. But you got to also, you know, you also have to uh, do things that are limited government, you know, yeah. that that, um, you know, all the all the principles that we stood for in the Tea Party movement, and I I know as well the Ron Paul uh, people as well, and I saw that too, Michael. I mean, it was like, wait, what's happening? What's happening? All of my people that were in the Tea Party movement all of a sudden just went over to Trump. Yeah, and I, was like, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. You know. Well, and yeah, we were we were a, we were a little little kookier over in the Ron Paul side, but <laughs> <laughs> you know. That's all good. But they, they ran the playbook. They scared the S out of everybody. And then we just, right. nobody's thinking clearly. That's right. They're That's scared right. for their family. They're scared for their parents. They're scared. And then they'll do, they can do whatever they want. It's the same thing with the Patriot Act. That's People right. were mm -hmm. justly afraid, but it justified the expansion of government we haven't That's ever right. seen. That's right. Um, and, and that, if I may say, that's what's happening. So, so what we used to despise on the left this kind uh -huh. of rhetoric and stuff that would scare you, uh, climate climate change, what all the names they have, you know, all this <laughs> stuff, you know, and we, all of us on the right have always hated that. Well, hello, we're seeing people on the right use this same yep. strategy all the damn time now. And that's where I'm so frustrated. I mean, some things are worrisome. Yes. Does that mean that every dadgum thing needs to be? No. no. You know, let's let's get back to talking about principles and what our end goal is instead of fear mongering over every little thing that frankly is false. A lot of times it's yeah. just flat out false. So anyway, yeah. go ahead. Michael. Sorry. Uh, oh, uh, I'm going to take us on a segue unless Charles, you have something on this. Well, I do. I do. Just really quick. Because, I, because I, well, I guess it might take us in a different direction, too. But I'm curious because I think I mean, you. Both of you made such great points during this, and I think it really brings up something in my mind, which is that the media did so much to, to vilify Trump that it made a lot on the right defend him. Yep. But I think we got to this place where he, with coronavirus, I mean, it, it, you held him accountable in the primary by voting for someone different. But it's almost as though we're not allowed to hold people accountable because the media vilifies them. So now we just have to automatically defend them. And so it just seems like we're in this place where we're not allowed to hold people accountable anymore. And that's not something that the right has ever really adhered to, but suddenly, suddenly that's our thing. So. You hit it. Uh, you also hit the nail on the head, Charles. That's exactly right. So if you do call out uh, a particular uh, uh, politician, I try to remind people, guys, 
these are politicians. I was, when I was a politician, I said, I'm a politician. You know, um, when you cannot say this is a bad decision and I don't like it, uh, something is wrong. And that's where, unfortunately, we have gotten, and I think it started with Trump, uh, to a place of personalities rather than principles. Right. So it doesn't matter. Um, you know, uh, morality doesn't matter. Uh, doesn't matter if you're also if a politician is behind the scenes conniving mm -hmm. and trust me, they are, uh, <laughs> you know, and it looks like and, and everybody will go, Woo! you know, I'm like, OK, they were behind the scenes manipulating things. Uh, you know, for instance, when you see somebody decide to uh, uh, leave a position and oh, my God, two seconds later, somebody comes out to uh, run for that position. And oh, my gosh, the person who left that position all of a sudden has an endorsement for that person. But if it's people you like, it's all OK. But if it's somebody you don't, then they'll, you know, a lot of people will, you know, vilify that. It was like, okay, the hypocrisy is getting a little frustrating mm -hmm. for me. You know, you can, you can dislike that approach by people you like as well. Um, and, and, you know, and, and you can say, Hey, I don't like this. I'm still, I'm still glad this person is running, but clearly there were some backroom dealings going on here, you know, which used to be taboo, right? You know, nobody wants backroom dealings. We're like, everybody's doing it, you know, but you only like it when your people do it, you know? So that's where I'm very frustrated is if you call out anybody, you know, that if you call out a person for something that you dislike, you're instantly, and Charles, you're very familiar with this, um, instantly a rhino, which I am now uh, on many things, because I'll say, you know, this isn't good. I don't like this. It doesn't mean I don't like the person. It doesn't mean I'm not going to vote for the person. It doesn't mean it's just like, this is bad. This yeah. is not good. And, and, and it doesn't even have anything, it, even if it doesn't have anything to do with uh, policy, it, it, it'll have something to do with a person. And it was like, how does that make you a rhino? What I don't, I don't understand where we are anymore. Right. You know, even though I was a Senator and the most conservative, you know, Senator, and I have a record, you know, people, who, you, matter. Matter, <laughs> you know, people who have no record are calling me a rhino. So anyway, it's just not a good place to be. And I'm, you know, I'm just saying, all I'm saying is this is not a good place for us to be. And we need to call you. We need to, I get the anger. We, you know, I, and when I, I, when Trump got elected, I realized Michael, and you were saying this earlier, it's like, okay, I was angry. Everybody was angry. I didn't know they were this angry. Right. Mm -hmm. And people have a right to be, Absolutely. But, 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 but government has still grown yeah. uh, on both. I mean, so why are we holding one up, you know, and, and while it's always better, some people are better than others. You also can't act like, you know, whoever is God's gift to um, government. If they're continuing to do the things that you're frustrated, that have made you so angry in the first place. So, yeah. Um, back to the personalities, Obama in, uh, I think it was 2008, uh, Noam Chomsky is the person who said this. He was given some big award for marketing campaign of the year by some magazine, like beating out Apple, beating it, like beating out all the big companies because of his presidential campaign. He was sold to people as a personality mm -hmm. and an example of somebody on the left side who ran on a bunch of stuff and didn't do any of it, mm -hmm. none of it. So they're pissed too. Everybody's yeah, pissed. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's another thing that frustrates me. It's like, you know, <clears throat> and I tell people and people say, oh, you know, all the infighting on the right, which I say that too. And it's just like, can we just kind of get back to, you know, talking about mm, issues and there's, I have a lot of issues with all the infighting, but, but people act like it's only on the right. It's like, yeah, no, no, it isn't only on the right. The left is, and particularly with the AOC, what do they call them now? The squad. Yeah. Yeah, the squad, you know, and stuff. And it's permeating Texas, right? Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing that. And, and there's infighting on the Democrat side. They're, you know, trying to, it's different. You know, the Tea Party movement was about getting back to 
conservative principles, the, the squad mentality is more about making things even more government controlled, you know? Um, and so, so, you know, people will liken the two and I'm like, uh, no, we're trying to, you know, we're trying to get back to responsibility, whereas they're going even further away from it, you know, uh, and just wackadoodle. The Tea Party movement wasn't wackadoodle. It, we, just because we want to keep more of our own money, you know? Um, so, so anyway, yeah, there's lots of infighting on the left, lots yeah. of it. Uh, yeah. But you know, it's the only Satan. It's the only thing that's saving the right right now, is what I think, frankly. Yeah. You <laughs> know, uh, because if if they weren't so wackadoodle with the, you know, what the the um, he, her, him, he, mm. you know, all of that kind of stuff, all the social type things, mm. I don't, I I worry actually, yeah, um, be because they have the media on their side right, so right. they can say things uh you know they can push that agenda as well uh but fortunately you know a lot of people have woken up and it's like what they think <laughs> children should be you know they think parents should take children and have you know surgery taking you know uh gender affirming care this is another thing i wanted to touch on with the with the uh, with the texan you know that's how the media writes about it gender affirming care well doesn't michael doesn't that sound so nice it does. Gender affirming care do that and think about it so if you're somebody that's not involved in politics that much and you hear on the you know all the tv stations that are in airports hotels you know and you hear the republicans are against gender affirming care well isn't it, uh, uh, you know, it's it's no, um, it's not surprising to me that somebody that's not that involved would go, you know what, those Republicans are horrible mm -hmm. because yeah. they're trying to stop gender affirming care because that's a beautiful thing, whatever the hell that is, because they don't, <laughs> you know, because it just kind of gives you this. And this is what the media does. They take the left's lingo and they make it, you know, their lingo, um, activist left, by the way. And so, but so what the Texan does when we're talking about gender affirming care, you know, we talk about literally what it is. Now, we're not in any way incendiary at all, you know, but we'll talk about this is, you know, surgeries for minors that involve, you know, whatever, you know, we try to be as descriptive without being horrific, right? You know, um, and it just so, and we're not using the activist language. Right. They're using the activist language. Right. So because we just want people to understand what we're talking about, what this issue is. Um, and so so that people can make a better decision. And guess what? The left, many people on the left go, what? <laughs> you know, when they hear what it really is. Yeah. Um, and I think that's important. And, and frankly, if you're still on the side of, yes, we think parents should take their kids in because they decided that they, instead of being a girl, they want to be a boy. And so, you know, have top surgery, as they call it, you know, uh, I mean, if they still decide that, well, so be it. But but you at least we at least need to understand what it is that we're talking about. And mm -hmm. that's where the, the Texan comes in. Um, you know, reproductive health care is another one uh, for a abortion. Well, you know, healthcare, you know, you are in fact ending the life of a baby in a womb. Right. Now, again, we don't say that. We just say abortion because mm -hmm. everybody knows what abortion is, but the left yeah. media says, uh, you know, a uh, reproductive health care. And again, if somebody that's not involved in politics is, you know, those Republicans are trying to get rid of reproductive health care. That sounds very different than Republicans against abortion, right? Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, and so again, we're not using it, we're not using activist language, we're using real language. Um, and so that's what we're trying to get everybody back to. So we can argue about real things, real issues, and try to come up to a, you know, with a conclusion on that, not this, you know, name calling garbage rhetoric based on conjecture. You know, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Michael, do you want to start with civil asset forfeiture since we're kind of, we have about well, 10 minutes or so? Yeah. And I really want to yeah. talk about that. Okay, go they, for it. Yeah, I do. They really understand framing. Uh, but yeah. uh, so my question is, one one of the things Trump did that I liked was the First Step Act. Mm -hmm. And <gasps> it, we had all this momentum on the right with right, right on crime and yes. Republicans <laughs> yes. understanding the 
the violations of our fourth amendment rights. And it was like, we're all moving. And then George Floyd is killed. And I feel like we went back 20 years on the right. You can't even talk. (laughs) We're so sympathetical. Yeah. We can't even talk about civil asset forfeiture. And I know in your reelection campaign, they went after you. I mean, this was pre George Floyd actually, but they went after you, your sheriff. So I guess my question is what do we got to do to get that issue back on the right track? Is it, we're back to square yeah. one and we need to tell people what it actually is again. Yeah, it's a good it's great because I think a lot about this because I feel like I was making huge headway in the Senate. Mm-hmm. Huge headway. And it wasn't easy. I mean, I said all the time, these Republicans were old school Republicans. You lock them up, you throw away the key. Right. Um, and I was like, I no, guys, violent crimes are very different, you know. Uh, you know, uh, and and but we're talking things that uh abuse the fourth and fifth um amendments, right? You know, and and you should never the government, and I said, you know, what they don't understand, I think a lot of times politicians in government, they don't realize they are the government now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're the government. Stop they stop passing these laws that makes the, the government the ability to take more people's stuff, you know. Um, and so it was very, 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 I was making a lot of headway explaining, you know, and people were coming along. Of course, the Democrats have been pushing this uh, for a long time um, because, and, you know, at one time they were civil liberties oriented. I don't know that their larger party is anymore. It's really interesting, right, how we're seeing this shift in both parties. Um, so they used to stand for civil liberties. There's still a lot of Texas Democrats who do. Again, they're kind of more the old time Democrats. Um, and so we were making so much headway with that. And when I would explain, you're allowing government to take people's property without any, yes, you know, and I'm just like, this is wrong. How can anybody be for this? You know, and uh, so we were making so much headway. Um, uh, there are a lot of on the right that, you know, came along and understood. It was much harder in the Senate, I think, than in the House. Um, and I, you're exactly right. Then, you know, I lost. And then, you know, all of this with, uh what was his first name? I'm sorry, George. George, George, yeah, George, George, George Floyd. Uh, was, um, and you know, and it's just like it opened the floodgates on the left. Mm-hmm. They were calling you know stuff criminal, uh, 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 you know uh, this uh, kind of thing where you just let anybody out. You know, you don't prosecute anybody. Everybody, yeah. you know, oh, is kind of more the um, you know feel sorry for them mm-hmm. rather than because they did a bad deed they should be punished. Right. And let me just say, you know, I always said too the 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 time needs to fit the crime is a is a phrase I would use a lot sure. as well. You know, once they have been punished for their crime, then we should do everything we can, not necessarily government, but government should get out of the way after they have served their time. In other words, not put more laws in like, okay, you can't become a barber because you can't hold scissors in your hand. Right, Charles? We talked, there's so many laws like that. There's like, okay, now they've served their time. They've gotten out of prison. They want to have gainful employment, but they can't, you know, go into, you know, can't be a barber or salon because they yeah. can't hold scissors. You know, uh, that's yeah. a little bit. No, <laughs> I mean, it does exist. I mean, they, it sure they yeah. exist. Yeah. Yeah. So, so government makes it very hard after we have had them, you know, uh, uh, punished uh, to then actually get gainfully employed. Uh, and so that's very, very important as well. Get out of the way after they've done it. Now, If they go on and once again, break a law, then they need to be punished again. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, but but now the left, you know, uh, is it's like they don't even deserve to be punished. You know, like there's no victims. Mm -hmm. And and it is it's taken us back. I've said that I've articulated that to so many people. I'm like, (gasps) now, if anybody hears criminal justice reform, uh, they think they don't think what we're talking about. You know, uh, allowing people to, 
you know, keep their stuff unless you've got a, you know, and, uh, and, uh, uh, allowing people to be gainfully employed after they have been punished. I mean, it's very simple stuff. This isn't, this isn't hard, right. right? But the left has taken it and made, you know, and I just, I've bemoaned that for a long time. It's like, I don't know if we can get back there um, and, and try to prove that, you know, yes, we have a role to play in people breaking laws. And yes, we have a role to play in, 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 in not hindering them from then going on to be productive citizens. Mm-hmm. Uh, but we're also not going to act like, you know, if there's a victim in a crime, that's a problem, you right. know? Um, so well, yeah, I don't know what the answer is. What's so frustrating about it is around the time when you were leading this and there was just so much conversation around yes. it. It's like the the once the left staked out their position, the right responded to it. It was like, oh, well, now we can't That's talk right. about it. That's exactly right. right. It's, it's like, like, it's once again, it's just like, you know, right. we got to throw everybody away. We can't, you know, we've got to, we've got to, you know, uh, squash every civil liberty you're supposed to have, you know, and like, are you thinking through this? Right. You know, and again, that coronavirus just comes to mind. I'm like, okay, if you are allowed to, you know, tell people that they cannot leave their homes, you know, during this, that, which we've come to find out. I mean, to me, it was just common sense. It was like, guys, you know, this doesn't make sense. None of this is making, all like common sense was just thrown out the window, mm-hmm. you know? Okay. And, and yet we have a Republic, we have Republicans in charge at the federal mm-hmm. and the state level. And you, what do you think they're going to, what do you think the left's going to do when they're in charge? You know, if they're big government people, they proclaim big government. <laughs> and here our guys are supposed to be limited government, personal responsibility, which nobody talks about anymore, mm-hmm. personal liberty people. And they're in, you know, telling us what the heck to do. And I'm like, I mean, it's just, I, and yet, and here's where, you know, the if I, some people on the right are like, Okay, well, that's okay. Because it was our guys who did it. (laughs) No, it isn't okay. It's actually worse that our guys did it, you know? So, um, obviously, I'm a little frustrated. <laughs> no, I'm just curious with um again, I know we're coming up on time, but you're you've either willingly or just by happenstance moved into this place of being kind of I don't want to say you the the person who calls people out, but essentially like calling out what is wrong with today's conservative movement. And I and one of the tweets you recently had, I think it was yesterday actually when, or maybe it was a couple of days ago, they were saying that more than a million people, you know, registered with no photo ID. And then, you know, obviously that ended up proving to be true. And you came out and said that, and, and it's like saying things like that now, even when it's untrue is unpopular and people might call you a rhino for that. And, and, but you don't seem to take issue with that. You still do it because I think it's important, but I guess, how do you find yourself in that place? And, and it seems like this is the new role that you've taken on because so few others are willing to do it. <laughs> I don't like it, Charles. I really don't. I don't like to, you know, and then I, I, I I don't know. I just, you know, it's frustrating to me. It's like, can we just argue what I always say is let's just argue the real things that we need to be arguing about. Why are we making stuff up? You know, there's like I said before, there are so many things to be frustrated over, to be uh, uh, want to fix. Why are we making up stuff? And this is it. That was one of them. Patently, totally false Mm -hmm. bull crap. Mm -hmm. And people are screaming and they're wasting (laughs) their time and their energy. And they don't, you know, you're not going to have time or energy to work on the real stuff if you're getting that bent out of shape over something that is totally and patently false. And what's very frustrating to me now is people don't even want to hear the truth. Like you'll say, this is untrue. Oh, who's paying you? (laughs) What? What? (laughs) Or, you know, you're running like, what? I don't know. It's a weird place to be. I mean, I'm going to continue to do it. I don't, I don't take pride in it. I don't want to, but dad gummit, you know, we've got to get back to dealing with the things that are at hand fix them and move on and quit acting like, you know, um, uh, all this other stuff that is patently false is true. And therefore we need to be outraged. We live in an outrage society right now. Mm -hmm. Right. And again, that was something that we used to bemoan about with the media. They always used to scare us. And well, 
people, Twitter accounts on the right, media on the right, they all do it. If mm. they're using incendiary language, if something is always, 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 you know, scare, scaremongering, if, if uh, a particular person is always, if this, you know, media or Twitter accounts are always like, this guy's always right and this guy's always wrong, people need to step back, you know, take a breath and say, maybe they're manipulating me too. <laughs> you know, maybe they're manipulating for, me for sure. Yeah, I gotta. If you've got a couple more minutes, I have one more question I want to ask. You bet. Uh, and you can be brief. Uh, Florida social media ban for kids. I know, but You're Florida talking social. Here, Michael. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't want you to be brief. I'm just. <laughs> if, you, if you need to go, uh, DeSantis no, just DeSantis just signed the uh, bill into law that says for for kids fourteen and under can't have access to social media. Yeah. Yeah. Complicated issue for a conservative limited yeah. government person. I have to tell you, I have not, I've kind of purposefully not delved into that, you uh -huh. know, because it is, it, 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 again, where we've gotten to this place when every, this is wonderful. This is, you know, this is terrible instantly. Nobody's, <laughs> nobody's put any thought into any of it, you know? And, and while I always appreciate DeSantis and may retweet something because I, I like him, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean, you know, I know good and well that every piece of legislation has to be read thoroughly for what it, because the, what is it in the details? Um, the devil's in the details, yeah. Right, the devil is in the details and my God, that's the truth, right? Mm -hmm. And so I always err on the side of, personal responsibility, you know, limited government. So if it's growing government, if it's taking away personal liberty now, children, elderly, very different, right? You know, sure. uh, there are some things where, you know, uh, and and so, so I honestly, I honestly need to be in a committee hearing. I honestly need to read the bill. I honestly need to hear that, you know, everybody kind of give their side and then go, okay. Now it's very easy for me to make that decision after I've heard it all. It's like, no, you're growing yeah. government now. You know, um, there's got to be a better way. Or maybe this is still an issue we need to deal with, but this isn't the way. And let me just add, I don't know how many people know, because I'm a, I'm a massive school choice advocate, but I voted no on the first school choice bill when I was in the Senate because it was a terrible bill. It was horrible. It was based on the franchise tax. Betancourt put it together. I told him a thousand times, it's a terrible bill. Um, and so because it was based on the franchise tax, it was, I can't, it's dependent on it. And so I can't go into the details now. I can't even remember, but basically you would have an advocacy of people that would, were achieving school choice because of the uh, franchise uh, uh, tax, excuse me, the franchise tax. Well, the franchise tax was something that I was trying to get rid of. Many of us were trying to get rid of it. It still needs to be gotten rid of. And I was like, I'm not voting yes on this bill. I'm trying to get rid of the franchise tax. And you're, you're, you know, and again, it's kind of weedy there. I don't want to get into it, you know, but, but, um, you know, I let it go to the floor. I let, you know, them, but I was like, well, I'm no on this because the bill was bad. Now, the second session, there was a much better school choice bill, and I voted yes for it because it, it you know, it did more of what it was supposed to be. You know, 20 percent followed the 80 the, percent uh, followed the student, 20 percent stayed with the public school, even though they didn't have a student there. You know, it was much more closer to a real school choice uh, bill. So having said that, so I just kind of wanted to clarify that sometimes you can have a bill, as we know, the left oh, has really done a good job. They call it, you know affordable care, affordable what health care bill, yeah. you know, it's like, it's done nothing but make health care more expensive, right? right? Mm -hmm. But we know that they claim things. Well, the right does it too. Um, my fellow Republicans in the legislature do it too. So you have to read the bill. And if, and if it's, you know, again, if, if any part of it goes against my principles, it's no, no, you got to fix this. And, and that's how we got things fixed frankly mm. like i'm not voting for this because look at this you know and and i gotta tell you a lot of people don't read the bill so <laughs> the first book david simpson gave me when i started working for him i think was titled we don't actually read these bills <laughs> <laughs> i'm telling you they don't i can't tell you how many times somebody you know somebody would say why did you vote no it's like did you read this part here oh 
<clears throat> they just read the headline and it's like it's like news articles just read the headline and call it a day and that's, that's it. right that's <laughs> right and maybe i mean every morning i would have my staff come in and we would argue over you know and say what you know this part we would go over every piece of legislation because we read the bills and that's what's so important so i just i get very frustrated with people screaming uh sometimes when i you know uh, uh such and such we should have passed this you know and and i mean this last school choice bill i mean you know how much went to you know how much money went to public schools on that school choice bill? I mean, bribery. Right? Yeah. 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 Anyway. <laughs> so in other words, you know, can we just please let's let's use some discretion. Let's think about this. Think things through. At the end of the day, if we disagree, OK, we disagree. Uh, but I, I'm very, very frustrated um, with media on both sides, painting a picture that they want you to think rather than enabling you to think, you know, and and sticking to what we should talk about and stop, you know, throwing bombs every freaking day over things that we shouldn't be even discussing, much less expending energy on. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for giving us so much of your time. You're very generous. I thought this was a phenomenal conversation. I think Brad's going to be a little upset that he missed it, but I thought <laughs> this is a great conversation. Um, Thank you. As always, uh, people can find you at, well, they can find you on Twitter at Connie, is it at Connie Burton on Twitter? It is, at okay. Connie Burton, yeah, and on you Twitter. Visit the Texan News, and you guys have an app now that they can download. Yes, and you get yes, all caught up yes. On there. Um, and all of your journalists just uh, launched podcasts, too. Yes, uh, and newsletters. We yeah. got new new podcast news newsletters they're more analytical really awesome so much good stuff and i just want to remind everybody listening that while i have opinions and and i state it you know uh, all the time listen i have opinions i'm the owner ceo i do not edit i do not write i don't have that that's my staff they have a they have direction mm -hmm. we want to be a news organization that does what news organizations no longer do and that is present the facts so that you can make up your own mind mm -hmm. and and i am dead set on that mission and so are they so while i'm sitting here spewing i mean i'm this former state senator who has a record <laughs> why all of a sudden would i all of a sudden act like I don't know, you know, oh, I don't know. Right. It would be disingenuous, I think. So so I continue to be who I am, but I make sure that the team, you know, is who we set out to be and they continue to do a phenomenal job. I hope everybody goes to the Texan.news, looks up all of our staff, follows them on Twitter, you know, obviously subscribe. We are subscription based. Um, it's just my husband and I who are funding this organization. It's very hard, I might add, you know. And so while we don't want to be accountable to anybody but our readers. We don't want to be, you know, big money. We don't want to be accountable to any kind of big money donors. We don't want to be accountable to any kind of advertisers or anybody like that. We just want to be accountable to our readers. And so that's why we have um, it, it's subscription based. So I hope people go and take a you know, look at us and subscribe. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you so much, Connie. We really appreciate it. This is a yeah, great conversation. You're doing a great job. We'll Very talk to you later. Bye. Bye. <laughs> That was a fun conversation. Yeah, I really absolutely. enjoyed that. Absolutely. She brings the energy. <laughs> she does. Maybe it. we need to replace our third co-host with her. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Brad. Uh, no, that was fun. But I uh, appreciate you guys for tuning in. As always, make sure you subscribe, you like it, you share it with your friends, comment on Twitter, let us know what you thought. Um, make sure to tell us that you enjoyed this more with Brad not being here so that we can remind him next week. Um, and make sure you tune in next week because we should have a very ex another very exciting guest. So thank you guys for tuning in. Anything else to add, Michael? That's, you covered it. All right. See you guys. <laughs>